Bonjour everyone, it's Vicky here and in this video I'm going to explain when, why and how to use a copy and transform node in Houdini. So let's get started. I'm going to use a built workspace and the first thing I want to do is create an empty geometry network. So let's go to the top menu, start typing geometry and let's create it. Let's dive inside this new geometry network and in here I want to create something called platonic solids. So let's go to the tab menu again, find platonic solids and create it. And now you can see that I can change the solid type in here. So let's go to the drop down menu and you can see many different options. I will use tetrahedron. Okay, now let's go to the tab menu again and I want to copy, uh, I want to create our copy and transform nodes. So let's find it and create it and now make sure that your platonic solid is connected to the copy and transform. So the output of the platonic solid goes to the input of the copy and transform. Now let's display copy and transform and select it so that we can see the options. Let's go from the top. So the first thing we have in copy and transform node is our source group. If I go to the drop down menu, you can see that we have no entries. This is because our platonic solid is not divided into any groups. But if I choose a different object, for example, template head and connect it to my copy and transform node, now you can see that we can choose from different groups because some template geometries are already divided into different groups. Okay, let me get rid of this head and select and connect my platonic solid again. The next thing we can change is the source group type. So we can choose from primitives or points or the default guess from group. Then we have total number and total number is the total number of geometries we will see after applying copy and transform. So if I change that to zero, we will see no geometries. If I, if I change that to one, this will be one geometry, which is our original geometry. If I change it to two, we'll have two geometries. So our or original plus the copy. However, we cannot see the copy now. And why is that? Well, it's because we didn't change any parameters for the copy. So let's scroll down and see what we can change. So we have translate, rotation, scale, shear and uniform scale. So let's say that I want to move my copy one unit up. So in Y axis. So let's type one, press enter. And now we can see that we have our original plus one copy, which is moved one unit up compared to the original. If I increase the total number of copies uh, of objects, I can see that I have one more copy. So my original plus two copies, each one of these copies is moved another one unit up. So the first copy is one, uh, moved one unit up, the second copy is moved another one unit up. So two units in Y axis. We can do the same thing with uniform scale. So I can tell Houdini that I want each copy to be slightly smaller. And let me change this translation. I want it to be a bit lower as well. So now I just created a very uh, nice Christmas tree uh, using copy and transform node. What you can also do is maybe apply some rotation if you want each and every tetrahedron to be rotated. I'll just change that back to zero. Okay. And let's see what else we have here. So, so we have pack an instance to see how it works. Let's select our selection uh, tool and then also primitives. And now you can see that I can select individual primitives, ind individual faces on our geometry and on all copied geometries as well. But if I switch on pack an instance, now I will be able to select each copy separately, but I will not be able to select the faces. So it kind of groups our copied uh, geometries together. It packs our geometries. And now I can also change several more options here. So pivot location, I can change that to origin or uh, centroid. I can also display it as something different. So by default, it's full geometry. I can display it as bounding box. So for each geometry, I will see its bounding box. I can also use point cloud or um, centroid or hidden. So for some projects, you might want to change that. Okay, let's switch off pack an instance now. And let's have a look at another option we ha have here. So it's our transform order and we have two options in here. The first one allows us to choose in what order we will do the following, uh, change the following parameters. So 
at the moment it's first scale so it will change the uniform scale then it will rotate so it will use these values and then it will transform but we can change it to, for example transform scale and rotate and you will see that the outcome will be slightly different okay and the next thing we have is the order of axis. So by default, it's X first, then Y, then Z. But you can, for example, reverse it. So Z, Y, and X. So it will uh, do the action for the Z axis first, then Y, and then X. So again, you need to adjust that for your project. Let's scroll down even more. Uh, and we have our pivot transform options here. So to see our pivot, let's switch on show handles. So now you can see your pivot and you can move it. So with each copy, it will slightly move. So you can also adjust this parameter. Let me uh, switch that back to zero. And now we have two more options in here, which are very useful. So first of all, output group. So let me first create a delete node. So let's go to the tab menu, type delete and create it. And now I want to connect my copy and transform to the delete node and display the delete node. So now if I want to delete one of these, one of the copies, I would need to select all the faces individually on the, on the object or select the whole object. But I cannot select the group because I do not have any groups in here. So to create the groups and group the copies, I will switch on output group. And this allows me to, first of all, change the name. So I can say, for example, um, tetrahedron group. So tetra group, okay, and then press enter. And then when I go to my delete node, I can choose from the drop down menu from tetra group zero, tetra group one, and tetra group two. So now I can delete one of these, one of the copies or the original. Okay, great. So this allows me to find the copies quite easily. Okay, the second thing I have here is copy number uh, attribute. And to see how this works, let's change our workspace type to technical. And now we want to open this geometry spreadsheet. So just be careful because we have two things in here. So we have Python shell and then geometry spreadsheet. We just want geometry spreadsheet to be opened. And now when you select your copy and transform node and uh, make sure you have primitives selected here, you will see a copy number. I can click on the copy number to order it so that I have zeros first, uh, ones next, and then uh, twos, okay? So now you can see that for each primitive, I have a number assigned to it. So I have primitive uh, zero and it has number zero, which means it's our original. Then we have ones, which is the first copy and twos, which is the second copy. Okay, let's close it. And now let's create another copy and transform. So now what I will do is after uh, this, the first copy and transform, I will just go to the top menu and create another one. So copy and transform. And now what I want to do, let me just zoom out, is move this Christmas tree to the right. So I'll just move it to the right slightly and I want to have more copies. So I have six Christmas trees and I also want to rotate them. So now you can see that each one of these Christmas trees is copied to the right. So we have six copies in total, six Christmas trees, and it's also translated uh, two units to the right and rotate it by 15 degrees. So it's 15 degrees, this one, 30 degrees, 45, and so on and so forth. Copy and transform node is a very useful node that allows you to copy your geometry and then apply some transformation to each copy. Instead of creating several transform nodes and for each transform node uh, make the changes in the parameters, you can just use one node copy and transform. If you're interested and you want to learn more about this node, you can always go to the side effects guide. You will find as always a lot of useful tips in here and also the description of all the parameters. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you everyone and I hope you enjoyed it.